of application is mentioned in section 7. So section 7 is something we will be looking at in uh, detail today. The first principle you need to remember with regard to section 7 is there can only be one invention per application. Now this we get from section 7.1. Every application for a patent shall be for one invention only and shall be made in the prescribed form which is form 1 and filed in the patent office. You, you understand the that uh, the, uh, there can be only one application for one invention and it has to be the prescribed form. Section 10.5 mentions that the claim or claims of a complete specification shall relate to a single invention or to a group of inventions linked so as to form a single inventive concept. So now this is the point I've mentioned in the context of section 16. When there is more than one invention or there is more than one single inventive concept, then either by the controller asking the applicant to split the claims or voluntarily by uh, an action of the applicant, the applicant can file a divisional application and split the claims into the respective number of inventions. Now the second point to remember is about PCT international application. 7.1a and 1b talks of uh, treats or there is a deeming provision where an international application filed under PCT is deemed to be an application under this act which means that an international PCT will be treated as an application under the act if the corresponding application has also been filed before the controller in India. So it requires a corresponding application to be filed in the Indian Patent Office. In 7.1b, there is a reference to the filing date. The filing date shall be the international filing date. That is what it says when it comes to an application filed under the PCT. The third thing you need to remember under Section 7 is proof of right. Section 7.2 states that where an application is made by virtue of an assignment. Now, assignment, as we said, uh, the second category of person that is an assignee needs an assignment before they can file a patent application. So the assignment is what we call a proof of right. It is usually an agreement, an assignment deed which is created and filed before the patent office within the time stipulated. And the fourth thing you need to remember in section 7 is that the applicant has to possess the invention. Now. Section 7.3 states that every application under this section shall state that the applica applicant is in possession of the invention. Now possession is important and you also need to name the person claiming to be the first, true and first inventor and where the person so claiming is not the applicant in the sense that it has been assigned then the application shall contain a declaration that the applicant whom the applicant believes to be the true and first inventor. So the mention of what we call the mention of inventor is also covered in this subsection. So what is important here is to know that anyone who applies for a patent should be in possession of the invention. Now the possession is actually a concept that you will demonstrate when you file or draft the application. So it cannot be the case that you don't disclose the invention and file an application. Say you don't make a disclosure, what we call an enabling disclosure or a disclosure which a person skilled in the art can understand. Then it would be assumed that you didn't possess the invention. So it is an assumption and if you see form 1, there is also a specific provision where you have to, a checklist where you have to tick to say that it, that the applicant is in possession of the invention. So possession means not a prototype. It is not that some data has been generated. It is just a concept to show that the person has invented something and that has been described in detail in the application. The fifth thing you need to remember under this section is section 7.4 talks about the instances where a provisional application can be filed. It's an indirect reference, but if you see subsection 4, it says that every such application shall be accompanied by a provisional or a complete. But in the bracket it is mentioned, not being a convention application or PCT, designating India. Now this is where, what I mentioned, convention application and PCT application have the same status in the Patents Act because they are both international application. Now this tells us that you cannot file 
a conventional application or a PCT application through a provisional. So you cannot initiate a PCT or a conventional application through a provisional. Rather, you can only file a convention or a PCT application by filing the complete. The only other way you can file it is you have to file an ordinary application. If you are filing an ordinary application within India, then you can start it off with a provisional. In no other circumstance can you uh, start an application with a provisional. So this also indirectly tells us the instance in which a provisional can be filed. The emphasis is on not being a conventional application.